Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and this week our videos are geared to absolute beginners. I'm going to be showing you different techniques that you absolutely have to know when starting with watercolor. Now, please don't get overwhelmed. I am going to break them up into three different videos and we're going to have tons of fun. So let's jump into our first video where we're going to be learning about gradients and blending. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I come out with a new video and let's jump Thank you. Okay, so today we're going to be working on two really important techniques with watercolor that you need to know when you start painting. Now, just keep in mind that these techniques may be a little frustrating and it just gets, you need to get used to learning how to use watercolor. There's so many factors that uh, can present little hiccups and bumps in the road like water control and supplies like paper, just so many things. But once you get the hang of it, and it does take practice, this took me so long, but it's worth it because every practice session is so much fun. Just know that it will take practice, but you will get the hang of it. So these two techniques are blending and gradients. So with watercolor, the key ingredient to making watercolor flow the way it needs to is water. So we have our paints. These are paints that I have squeezed into a ceramic palette. You may see other paint palettes where they're the little pans, like the little square pans. Those will work fine. Whatever you have will work totally fine. But the only way that you're gonna get these to paint is by adding water. Using your brush and you know just not activating it with water is not gonna allow you to use watercolors full of potential. It just won't happen. So always start with a wet brush, wet or damp brush. It's also helpful if you have like a little spray bottle, you can spray to activate your paints. They need to be wet to work. Or you can just take your brush and dip it in your water and then, you know, just add a couple drops to each little well here to get them nice and wet and that will help activate them, okay? So the longer you leave the water on or the longer they stay wet, um, the more pigment you'll be able to pick up. So keep that in mind as well. Um, and I think we're ready to go. So the paints that I'm using right now are My Mary Blue. I have two yellows, two reds, two blues. Right now for this, you don't need to know um, any color mixing or anything like that necessarily. Just use whatever colors you have. I have a round brush in a size 10, and then I'm using Hannah Mule 100% cotton paper. So these techniques are gonna work different on different grades of paper. If you have really cheap um, cellulose paper, which I honestly started out with, this may be a little bit more difficult. The water and the pigment does not tend to soak in as well to cellulose paper as much as cotton paper does. So your outcome may look a little bit different than mine, but I'm going to show you the basics of the technique so that when you do or you feel like you would like to buy 100% cotton paper, you'll kind of have a better idea of what to do. And it does make a complete difference. Okay, so the first thing we're going to learn is a gradient. Well, actually, not a gradient. Uh, well, yes, no, a gradient. <laughs> um, and we're going to do a single color gradient. And what that is, is when you're moving from a really dark value of a color. So value means the lightness or darkness of a color when you're moving from a dark value to a light value. So this is helpful in landscapes when you're kind of trying to make a sky, maybe a night sky where it's darker at the top and it's a bit lighter towards um, the horizon line, um, or just, I don't know, lots of different things. So we're going to start with a single color gradient. What you're going to do is you're going to wet your brush. You're going to pick a color. I'm going to pick my ultramarine and I'm going to swish my brush around in my paint really well. So I'm picking up lots of pigment and I'm just going to start at the top of this paper going back and forth. And what we want to do is create a gradient from dark. So a dark value using lots of pigment to light using a pulling method. So you're gonna just slowly go back and forth, coming down, and it should start to lighten. But in order to help it along a bit, you're going to wet your brush again, just kind of swish it around, take off some of that pigment, make sure your brush isn't dripping wet, always kind of dry it on the side of your jar, 
and then you're going to touch the bottom here where you left off and you're going to continue to pull that color down. You're just coming down. This is a pulling method. And then again, if you feel like there's too much pigment there and you want to make it even lighter, swish your brush around, take some of that pigment off, run it against the side of your jar, touch where you left off and bring it down. Now, one issue you may run into is when you go back in, if you have too much water on your brush and you touch down where you left off and you bring it down, you might notice this kind of funky water line. Water likes to push pigment away. And what I mean by that, if I take some clean water here and I kind of just tap it there, do you see that kind of little firecracker effect? Water repels the pigment, it pushes it away. And this is actually a really fun technique that we're gonna learn later. Um, so if you notice that there's a distinct line there because you've added, you've added a little bit too much water to your brush, what you can do is wash off your brush, dry it off on your paper towel, just tapping it around, come back up to the top, bring it down again, like that. Wash off your brush a little bit, dry it, so you have less water on your brush so you don't get that watermark and continue to bring it down. And that is a single color gradient, okay? So this is really great for skies, like I said. And now we're gonna do a dual color gradient. That's when you use two colors. So you might see um, a night sky that is blue at the top and then it slowly moves into a sunset. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So again, let's pick a different blue. Let's pick Prussian blue for a change. And I'm gonna start by doing the same thing at the top of the paper. See how dark that is? Very dark value because I picked up a lot of pigment. Start at the top, slowly bring it down. There's no rush. There's a lot of pigment still moving down so I'm gonna wash off my brush a bit, dry it against the side, maybe even tap it on my paper towel just a little bit. Start where I left off, so it, if you tap your brush on the paper towel, you don't have that much water, it's not gonna repel the paint. Start where you left off, bring it down. And if it's still pretty dark, again, I'm gonna wash my brush off, tap it on my paper towel, just touch the edge of it, like so, and bring it down halfway, and stop. Then you're gonna pick your second color, okay? If you're doing a sunset or something like that, um, maybe it, you know, moves into pink. So I'm gonna pick my second color, Again, nice and saturated. And I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna start moving upwards. Again, I don't want a lot of this dark color. I want it to start to move a little bit uh, lighter. So I'm gonna wash off my brush. And if it feels better to pull down than move upward, you can always flip around your paper. Okay, and I'm just gonna slowly touch the bottom start to move it towards and you can see how light it is so I know when it kind of mixes here it's going to be a nice light wash and you can touch there or blend it in the middle just start to blend the two colors again just make sure you don't have a lot of water on your brush it's going to start to push that color away see here you can see it's there's like this slight line here there's a little bit too much water then so to fix that just washing my brush off so there's no pigment dabbing my brush on my paper towel and I'm just kind of moving it around blending it out a bit like so if I want to bring that pink up just a bit more wash off my brush dry it touch the pink like so you can kind of mix it in the middle so that's a dual color gradient all right it's also blending because you're blending in the middle you're blending two colors together they're not just meeting they're blending to create a new color so that's a really great exercise to practice as a beginner it may not look this smooth and seamless for your first try definitely try to um, dry off your brush if you are getting those watermarks. Just remember, it happens to all of us. The only reason why I know this is because I've done it a million times. <laughs> I have made that mistake a million times before I got it right. Okay. Also, like I said, your paper is going to make a huge difference whether, you know, the, the water and the pigment move the way you want it to. So one pad of paper I do recommend starting out with, which is a really great option, I can only seem to find the giant version of this paper, but it's Academy watercolor paper, um, also known as, I think it's like Bahong, 
I don't know how to say it, um, watercolor paper. You can find it on Amazon and it's pretty, oh, here's the, the Chinese name right there. Um, you can find it on Amazon and it's fairly inexpensive for cotton paper and it's a really good option. So if you do want to just hop into some cotton paper because you're getting frustrated with maybe your cheaper paper, which is fine to use. I started out with that too. Depends on your budget. This is a really great option. You can always cut it up into little pieces so you can use more of it. Okay, so that's our gradient. Now we're gonna focus on blending a bit and it's the same kind of deal. So blending is when you're mixing two colors together seamlessly, but also maybe when you're going back in to add shadows to things after things have dried and you wanna blend out lines to make them nice and um, faded out seamless, okay? So let's say, we kind of did the mixing of two colors, but we can do it again. Just let's blend two colors together on the paper. So maybe we want to do a little gradient from our yellow, and it doesn't have to go light. Yellow to blue. Okay, and we move inward. Again, try not to have too much water on your brush. And then you can kind of just blend them in the middle, like so. Okay, so that's one kind of blend. Now, usually when I blend in my work, let's say I'm doing hmm, like a leaf, okay? So I'm gonna make a leaf here. So I'm gonna use yellow and some blue and I'm mixing my color, okay? And I'm creating a leaf here. And I want to darken some of the areas to create a shadow. So this is going wet on wet. So which you will learn in a bit where I'm adding wet paint to a wet surface, but I want to make it this darker. Okay. So maybe I'm adding in a darker green and I want to blend it in nicely because I don't want it to just be this dark green and then a line and then light green. I want it to blend. I want it to go from one color to the next like this gradient. So again, we just learned that adding more water is gonna repel the color. So what I wanna do is wash off my brush, dry it, and then very gently, I'm just gonna to touch where they meet and I'm just gonna kind of blend, just kind of moving around, maybe dragging it down a little bit. If you find you're dragging too much of that dark color downwards, again, wash off your brush, dry it, dry it, well because the littlest drop is going to make that kind of watermark and blend okay the other tip with blending is you don't want to apply a lot of pressure if you apply a lot of pressure you're actually going to be lifting some of the pigment which is a technique but if you're trying to blend you don't want to do that so lifting would be if you wash off your brush dry it and then you blend but you're kind of applying a lot of this pressure see how i'm lifting some of that color up so now it's dark, light, medium. You don't want that. You want the tiniest amount of pressure just going back and forth with the tip of your brush to blend it out. Okay, and then you get this really nice gradient of a dark to light shadow. All right, now if you do want that kind of um, like stark line for a shadow, you can do that and you don't have to blend it out. I'm gonna show you how to blend as well on wet on dry. So we did wet on wet, which again, I'm going to go over what wet on wet and wet on dry is more in depth in part two of this video, which is coming out whenever my next video comes out. This is a weird looking leaf, but that's okay. Um, but the wet on dry is when you paint another layer onto a dry surface. So right now this is wet, but I need it to dry. So I'm going to wait a minute, come back and let it completely dry. Okay, so now my leaf is dry. I'm gonna show you how to go back and add shadow on an already dried surface and then blend it out so you get the same kind of effect, even though this dried kind of funky because we did lift, um, but it should have been a smoother gradient. Now either will work, uh, but I feel like this method might be a little bit easier for beginners because wet on wet can be tricky with water control. So we have a dry surface. Now I'm gonna go back in with my dark green apply it to the area where I want the shadow. Now see how when we apply wet on dry, you get that stark line there. Quickly, you're gonna wash off your brush, 
dry it on your paper towel and you're just going to touch the edge and blend it the same way we did our gradient and you're just moving along okay mine's a little streaky right now that's okay very gentle just slowly moving it and I'm going to be going to the edge of the leaf and I washed and dried off my brush because I noticed that a little bit more of that dark pigment was moving its way into the lighter area and I didn't want that so I washed it off dried it and just touched the second or the the edge so I'm going to go back in add a little bit more darkness again wash off my brush dry it on my paper towel and slowly and gently moving it along if I have too much pigment there wash and dry my brush off so I'm really maintaining the lightness of the highlight over here really gently okay and you should get a decent gradient from dark to light that way as well um, try both methods see what works also with the wet on wet type another way you could do it um, so we have our light value here or our light color sometimes if you do like a little bit more of a stark kind of not definitely like a straight shadow line but you can always just tap like that so wet on wet which you again will learn in our next video makes a really nice blurry kind of effect it naturally kind of wants to blend watercolor pigment wants to move wherever there is water okay so if there is water if all this is wet it's going to slowly start to move that way once an area starts to dry that that pigment is going to stop moving and you're going to see these kind of funky lines which we call blooms or watermarks so naturally you're going to get kind of this gradient so if you like this where it's still kind of like a stark line where you see the dark and then the light if you like that style though go for it if you want it to be a bit more blended with the wet on wet technique really dry off your brush gently gently blend like so okay so you can do it either way and like I said, I love to use this in my flowers, in everything, especially like if I'm doing a flower, let's say there's a petal here. Actually, I wanted to make it lighter, but I didn't think about that. Okay, and you can do your dual color gradient. Okay, I'm doing like a flower and say I want to add a darker shadow or even a darker color towards the center of this. Okay, so I'm going to take some of my pink, add a little bit of blue to it. With the wet on wet, I'm tapping towards the center, adding that color. Now, if you like the way it looks with the wet on wet, where it kind of just bleeds out like that, leave it. You can totally leave it. But if you want more of a blended look, wash off your brush, dry it, and just gently touch it. So it's a bit more of a seamless blend. But again, it's all about style and what you personally like. And then if you wanted to do it after it's dry, I will show you, I'm gonna dry this first and I'll come right back. Okay, now that it's dry, I will show you how to add again, the shadow with it on dry. <laughs> I just made my pink really dirty here. That's okay. Okay, I added my shadow. Maybe I want there to be a dark gradient kind of coming up the petal here. Place my shadow, wash, dry off my brush, and just kind of touch the edge of it and just slowly move it along. Okay, again, it wants to, the pigment wants to move where there's water. So if I stop dragging it there, you're gonna see a line. So you wanna drag it to the end, but I don't wanna bring all that pigment, so I'm washing, drying off my brush. Again, touching the edge of that blending it to the end okay so those are different ways that you can blend and use color gradients in watercolor it's so much fun but again it takes a lot of practice just keep practicing and have fun with it release all the pressure of creating a masterpiece especially when you're beginning 
It's not supposed to look perfect the first time. Mine didn't by, <laughs> by a long shot. So just have fun, practice, and let me know in the comments if there is anything that you're struggling with specifically with this technique. And then make sure to check back for our next video because we're going to be doing two more techniques that you absolutely need to know when starting with watercolor. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something and I will see you in our next video for our third and fourth technique that you just have to know when painting with watercolor. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.